Hi, what's going on guys? My name is Enzo and today we are going to learn how to build a decentralized application. In previous videos we have learned how to build, test and deploy smart contracts. Now it's time to phase them from the other side and build a web application that interacts with the blockchain. Let's dive in. Along this video we will be using a few tools that will make our job easier. The first one is HardHard, a development environment for developing Ethereum smart contracts. I have a video covering everything you need to know about HardHard and how to install it on your computer. Check it out. Next, we'll be using Next.js to build our web application and Ethers.js as a library to connect to the blockchain. Don't worry, you don't need to know anything about those to be able to follow the video. As always, you can find all these links right down in the description of the video. There are three ways to interact with a smart contract. Read transactions, write transactions, and subscriptions to events. We are going to build a web application that covers all of those by interacting with the following smart contract. The smart contract is called greeter and it has a state variable called greeting that stores the current value for the greeting. Then it declares an event where it will populate the data for the previous and the new greeting. Once deployed, the constructor will run and initialize the greeting value. And then you have a function for getting the greeting value and one for updating it. The first thing we are going to do is run npx hat hat node to start our local blockchain. And then we'll be running npx hat hat run script sample script JS targeting the local host network to deploy our smart contract to this blockchain. If you don't know how this works, please check my hat hat video to know more about it. I have already added the required HTML for this application and it looks something like this. The idea is that we'll be displaying the current greeting value right here and we'll have an input and a button to update its value. For a web application to interact with a blockchain smart contract, it needs two things. The first one is the smart contract address, and the second one is its ABI, an interface that defines which functions are available to the caller. We can get our contract address from the previously run deploy script. We're going to store it in a variable. Then for the contract ABI, you can go to the artifacts folder inside contracts and you'll find the build JSON file that contains the ABI. We are going to store it in an artifact constant for now. Finally, we also need to set up our MetaMask in the browser to connect to our local blockchain. For that, we can open MetaMask, click on the networks and click on show how test networks, toggle it on. And now we'll see here the option for localhost 8545. We click it, and if you go back to the terminal where you run NPX hard hard node, you can grab the first account private key, and then in MetaMask, import an account using the private key, pasting it here, and you have already your account. Now that we have all our blockchain data in place and MetaMask set up, we are going to start writing our application logic. The first thing is to add a connect wallet function. This assumes that the user already has an Ethereum wallet connected to his browser, like MetaMask. In a real application, you probably want to check if that's the case or not. Next, we are going to run the disconnect wallet function whenever the page loads using the React hook. If we now refresh the application, we'll see a MetaMask confirmation about which account we want to connect. We'll be using the imported account. Now that we are connected, we are going to see how to retrieve the greeting value from the smart contract. First, we need to create a state variable that stores this value. Next, we will also need the reference to the smart contract instance. For getting the smart contract instance, we are first going to import the ethers library. Another function up here called get window sign contract instance that uses the web provider from the window object, so the MetaMask one and uses it as a signer to build a smart contract instance using our smart contract address and our ABI from the artifact we grabbed earlier. Now that we have this helper function, we are going to call it in our use effect right at the top, so it's the first thing we do whenever we load the page. Now that we have a smart contract instance, we are going to add a fetch greeting function that enables us to grab from the smart contract instance the value from the get greeting function exposed by the smart contract. Once we get it, we are going to update our state variable and display it here at the bottom. The moment where we want to fetch this greeting is a bit tricky because we need the wallet already to be connected and this function is asynchronous, so we need to await for it and you cannot await inside the React use effect hook. So we are going to use a function that wraps both calls and handles this for us. We will declare connect and fetch 
calling the connect wallet function and the fetch greeting function. And we are going to call this inside our use effect instead. If we come back to the page and refresh, we'll see that we're displaying the initial value I gave it when I deployed the smart contract. If I now disconnect the current account, we'll see that the browser will ask us whenever we refresh to first connect the account and then it will fetch the value from the greeting. Now that we have learned how to make read transactions, we're going to see how we can do write transactions to update the greeting value. For that, we're going to add another function here called update greeting. And this time we're going to call the set greeting function that we have defined in our smart contract, passing in the value received as an argument. In order to get this value and call the function, we're going to add an unsubmit handler to the form HTML event that will prevent default events so the page doesn't reload. And then we are going to grab the form data from the form and call the, our update greeting from using the value inside the greeting input name, which is our input here. If we come back to the web application and we try setting a new value, we'll get a prompt confirmation from MetaMask. This time notice that there is a gas fee as we are writing on the blockchain. And once you confirm, you will see that apparently nothing happens here, but on the hood, if we refresh, it has effectively changed the value on chain. Now you may wonder how we could update this greeting value whenever it has changed without reloading the page. The first option that could come to your mind is do something here, right? After the transaction has been minted on chain, you just update it locally and that's it. However, this doesn't cover cases where there are multiple flows updating this value at the same time and cases where there are more than one people updating this value as well. For that, we're going to use events and event subscription, which is our third way of interacting with the smart contract. We want to create a subscription whenever the page loads. So we are going to come to the React hook and add a snippet that enables us to connect to the smart contract instance and use the Ether API to make an event subscription. The important piece is, is the on function call and then specifying the event name, which is change greeting, as we have defined inside our smart contract here. And then we can grab the values from event.args as we have specified them here, old greeting and new greeting. In this case, we are only interested by new greeting and we will be once again updating our state variable locally to reflect the new greeting value. If we now come back to the web application and we try setting up a new value, we'll get the same prompt as before, but this time, once the transaction has been confirmed, we'll see that the value here has been updated without needing to refresh or anything at all. Finally, don't forget to remove all events listeners whenever they are not needed anymore. In our case, it's whenever the page changes. And that's everything I have for you today. Building decentralized applications is definitely a very wide topic. If there are any parts or features that you are especially interested about, let me know in the comments so I can cover it in a future video. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on and please like the video. Until the next one, keep coding, keep smiling.